You're listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Joining us today is Brian Kiley, author of The Astonishing Misadventures of Rory Collins. Brian is currently Conan O'Brien's head monologue writer and has been a show staff writer for 23 years, and he's been nominated for 16 Emmy Awards. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, sure, sure. Thanks for having me. Well, Brian, obviously you're a very accomplished TV writer, but today we're going to talk about your book writing. When did it occur to you that, oh, I think I want to write a novel? Well, you know, I, I, I always wanted to, or I, I always kind of secretly thought I would. And I had a mentor friend of mine who used to be like, when are you going to write your novel? And, you know, that kind of thing. But I think, but it actually kind of happened by accident where I was taking a class and I wrote what I thought was a short story. And when I finished, I read it to the class and the teacher said, well, that's not a short story. That's the first chapter of a novel. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it was like, it is. So then each week I would bring, um, bring it back and then uh, uh, shortly after that that's when um we were on the t- you know the, the tonight show stuff with conan and we got kicked off the air there and so uh that's when i would i was i had a few months free so uh, that's what i worked on every day I'd, I'd, I'd get up in the morning and shower and shave and and that was my way of going to work you know so that's interesting. So here's a very disappointing time, I would think, in everyone's life associated with the show. Sure. But you used it as an opportunity. Um, so that's great. Well, yes. I mean, it was a very depressing time, and it was a shock. But oh, I, I can't I, imagine. Yeah. Y- <laughs> yes. And it's – I I tend to um, – when I get depressed, I try to kind of work through it as best I can. So that's what I tried to do. Great. Well, that's great. So what was your writing process like? So after you shaved and showered and you got up, did you like set out to write for one hour a day or try to finish five pages a day? Oh, uh, that's a good question. You know, I, I went uh, into my guest room. Like, I made sure I went to a room that had no, uh, you know, didn't have a, a computer or, uh, you know, any any distractions and um i don't know that i i set a period of time but i i tried i probably would write for three or four hours and i i i knew where the where i wanted the novel to end but i didn't know where it was going and i would i would sit and write and then i would at the end of of my session i would look over what i wrote and thought well there's something wrong with me um, you know, it was so much darker. <laughs> it was really, it was really dark and, <laughs> and disturbed. And I was like, "Well, I don't know where that came from, but that's what I came up with." Today. <laughs> that's funny. And then, and then you finished it, and you started searching for a publisher, or you found an editor. What What did you do next? The teacher actually con- had me contact this uh, publisher, and the woman was very excited, and then. I guess she kind of changed her mind or something. I, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, we hear so, that a lot. <laughs> is that everyone happen? think yes. Everyone thinks oh, this it's very positive feedback, and then either they don't hear from anyone or you know it's just very strange. Or they get dropped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what happened with me, and it kind of threw me. I mean, I, I had gotten very good feedback from the class, so that made me gave me some confidence, and that kind of threw me for a little a loop. I have to say. I don't know how I got connected with Donna Kavanaugh for and Hugh Artcast, but I think someone recommended I talk to Donna because I think that she was sort of um, known for publishing like humorous books. Someone connected me to her, and that and luckily she liked my stuff. Great, and then that was it, and then you were you were hooked up together, and then she was the yes. publisher. Yes. What about the cover of your book? Did you have a say in that? You know, I would have just put it in a brown paper bag as far as I'm concerned, you know. I, there were certain things that, um, it, you know, there were certain things that, that one thing, I, I couldn't come up with a title for it. And I, I pitched different titles and everyone's like, no, and whatever. And it was my fr- a friend of mine that came up with the title for me. It, it's so funny. It, it's, it was easier for me to write the whole book than write the title. Huh, interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just funny the certain things that you get kind of hung up on. And so 
in terms of the artwork, it's like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have an eye for something like that or whatever, you know, I wouldn't. So I, I kind of let, um, you know, I, I let Donna handle that stuff for me. Yeah, well, I hope our listeners will first will purchase a book, but also first check out the cover because it's a very interesting cover. And then when you see Rory on the... <laughs> the bottom of the stairs. The of the stairs. It's, <laughs> Let's say it's funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, not poor, funny. Poor but, <laughs> not if you were him. It's I not know. funny. <laughs> yes, that wasn't my idea, but I do like that the imagery there. Yes, I agree. What did you do for promoting the book after after the book was published? I did have some interviews, and one of the things was they would say it's like okay, so this is an autobiographical. No, it's a novel. <laughs> I see. So this is based on your experience. No. I made it up. I see. So this is your life where you. Oh, wow. I, I, they would not, I, you know, they would not just, it's like, I don't understand if it's fiction. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, can, can you make up a story? And, and I, I don't know why they, they would not accept that, I, which I found very interesting. So I was looking at that, your Amazon page for your book, and I saw the quote from Conan O'Brien, and I thought, wow, that's got to help, I think, having a a quote from Conan O'Brien. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, he's, 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 you know, good Lord, he's a brilliant guy and with a big fan base. So, uh, I would hope that, uh, yeah, that was nice. It was very nice of him to read it and, and, uh, be complimentary like that. That was really, you know, I didn't know if he was going to be like, Hey, get back to writing for me. Don't what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. stop doing that. Right. <laughs> well, we do. Yeah. That, we do know that, um, it is difficult sometimes for people to get endorsements. So they're, they have creative outlets to try to figure out how to get their endorsements. So it was nice that you already have one built in. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously you have helped Conan quite a bit in his career. Also. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, he's, he's a big reader too. So, you know, some people he asks. It's funny you ask some of your friends like, "Hey, do you want to?" And you, some of my friends say, "Oh, I don't read." Yeah. You think, Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you really learn so, about people that way, right? You do because you, don't, like, you don't, That's not something you ask on a general basis. Oh, do you read this or whatever? Yeah. So it I, is interesting. I, I couldn't imagine not reading. You know, well, but it's just could funny. I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some people only read. You know the news news Facebook. articles or something like that or facebook yeah that's true <laughs> exactly that's true what kind of advice would you give somebody who's who's writing a, a novel right now but isn't quite finished with it or maybe it's just uh you know set it aside for a little while and thought i'll get back to it you know i've definitely started writing things that you know not so much with novels but i have started screen pay, plays where i've got you know 30 30 pages into it and been like ah this is going anywhere but i do think uh i do think t helping it take a class helps mm -hmm. because it gives you a little bit of a support system because you have other people who are trying to do the same thing and this way you can kind of encourage each other um you know i do think sure. I, I i've been to i've been part of writing groups which i think is helpful because then you kind of like oh i gotta you know i have to read in front of the group next week i better have something good <laughs> you know <laughs> it gives you a, i mean having a deadline helps um, and also just, I, I think setting a realistic goal of, even if it's 250 words a day or 500 words a day, if you do it every day, it builds up, mm -hmm. you know? So I think there's some people I'm going to, I'm going to lock myself away for the weekend and write it. <laughs> it's like, no, don't <laughs> do it like that. You know, just do it a, a bit of, you know, bit, a bit of time every day. I mean, if you're if you've got the time, if you can do it. I mean, I I had a few hours because I was out of work, but now when I'm working mine, I I try to write for a half hour, and that's all the time I have before I go to work. Right. So you that know, works. Yeah. 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 You can do it if you just set realistic goals and 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 uh, don't get down on yourself. You know. This episode of the Author Inside You podcast is sponsored by Scribafile. When you go to scribblefile.com, you'll find a community of writers. Across the top of the page, one of the tabs on Scribblefile is labeled Academy. And when you click on that, you'll find all sorts of great articles on how to make your writing better. Now, I just read the one on quotation mark usage. It's a great idea to get a refresher on how quotation marks should be used. When it comes to sitting down and writing your book, it can be difficult to remember exactly where the punctuation goes or whether you need one at the beginning of each sentence. 
Some of the authors that we spoke to in the past have said that grammar has slowed their writing process down. That's why it's important to go to scribblefile.com and go to the Writing Academy tab. Some other examples of articles on the Writing Academy are correct colon usage, correct semicolon usage, and what are comma splices. These are all tools to help making writing easier. So if you need a refresher course on punctuation, there's no place better to go than the Writer's Academy on Scribafile. So head over to scribafile.com. What did you find worked the best for you for promoting your book? Well, I was kind of lucky in that I used to do the David Letterman show from time to time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once a, once a year or once every year and a half or so. So uh, the last time before they went off the air, um, the last time I went on, uh, you know, Dave said, "Hey, you just wrote this book," and he put it up. You know, promoted it on the show. Wow, <laughs> that's very nice. So, you know, that was ended up. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to have millions of pe- people see that. So, great. That always helps. Yeah. And right. then, <laughs> so you've been quite busy. So you um, write for Conan. You wrote yeah. your own novel, and then you also were on America's Got Talent. I auditioned. Um, they they called me and said, you know, we want you to commit whatever. And I was like, you know, you you always want. They always want like the the, the, the backstory of, you know, I'm an orphan and I was oh. you know, from <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. age three and I brought myself, whatever, you know, right, right. I did all kinds of interviews and I went out and I did the audition and I, I got, you know, it's, the crowd couldn't be nicer. I, I got a standing ovation and the, all the four judges passed me and I was so, it was so exciting. Yeah. And then they called me, you know, a week later and said, okay, you're an alternate. Oh. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're yeah. like, well, if somebody, if somebody cancels, you're going to be on. And it's like, well, why would anyone cancel? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, who's going <laughs> to pass this up? So it turns out no one canceled. <laughs> and um, That's so surprised. I didn't make it to air. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun experience, and it was very surreal having them critique you. And, you know, Simon Cowell said, you were very naughty. Oh. And very funny, which really made me laugh. Well, I don't think he said very naughty. I think he just said, I think he said, you got naughty. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, but what an really experience. I mean, how many people can say they did that? That's wonderful. Yeah, no, no. It, it seems was, like... and, and the guy before me, they pulled out, they brought a suitcase on stage, and he climbed out of the suitcase oh. and did all kinds of <laughs> stuff. You know? We were like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, yeah. And when I got there, there was a guy who was a chubby guy in a white leotard with white face paint, and he went on with a toilet in his head as the human toilet. Oh. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're an alternate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And he didn't. He didn't make it past the judges. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then so we heard was, that you were you were in the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle too. Yes, that was a funny thing. It was about I had just started working at Conan a couple of weeks earlier, like like two weeks earlier, and someone called me. It was a Sunday morning. Someone called, and my wife came and woke me up, and she's like. You're in the Sunday Times crossword what? puzzle. And I thought, <laughs> you know, it's a prank. You know, why is someone doing this? Whatever. And so we go and got it. And sure enough, what happened was I had a joke that was quoted, I think it was in Reader's Digest or it was in Prevention Magazine or something. And they took that joke and they kind of built the puzzle around it. So wow. I, it w- I was like seven or eight different clues. It would say, you know, a quip from Brian Kyle, and it was you know they wow, had the whole that's show. incredible. Yes, it, yes, oh, wow. it really was. And you didn't was know insane. it was coming, which is really cool. I had no idea, and it's so funny because normally in show business, when something good happens, it takes forever. And by the time that it happens, you've kind of gotten over it. Okay. <laughs> you, know I mean? <laughs> you know, the first time I auditioned for Letterman, the producer came up to me and told me I was very good. And then I get on 17 years later. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, now I understand yeah. what you're saying. It takes a long yes. time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you were an alternate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's kind of how things go. So this was something I never imagined or thought about or whatever. And it was just um, just a kind of a fluky thing. What a fun, yeah. fun surprise. <laughs> You've got great yeah, stories, yeah. Brian. Absolutely. Well, thanks. <laughs> and then Matt said you're also going to be uh, opening for David Spade? I had a friend of mine who is, opens for him all the time call me and say, hey, I'm going to be hosting the show. Do you want to open for David Spade? And I was like, sure. So I've done a couple shows for him already, and then I've got one coming up uh, in September. I think it's at the I think it's at the Brea Improv. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. And, oh, that's uh, good and, to hear. I read his books, yes. and <laughs> I 
follow him. And Conan also. So now I'll be following you also. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, right. I'm glad to hear he's a nice person because you don't know. Oh, yeah. And Conan and, seems and, like a nice person also. Oh, my God. Yeah. And actually, Conan and I went to the same Sunday school when we were kids. Oh, oh my gosh. wow. That wow. is yes. weird. Huh. So you <laughs> yes, stay, did mean, you stay friends or you just well, reconnected? Well, we were in the same class. He's, he was two years below me. Okay. Um, but I kind of knew who he was and it's just kind of a fluke. And then when I got hired, I was like, hey, remember? Oh, that's yeah. funny. So, Brian, how can our listeners get in touch with you if they want to drop you a line or ask you a question? Uh, they could just go to my website, uh, briankiley.com, and there's a little, you know, contact me thing there. Okay, we'll put that on our show notes. So I understand you have an, a new novel that you're working on? I do. It's it's called Maybe Kevin. Uh, the germ of the I, I, idea came, f- it was, it's a, a slightly based on my dad, although it's, my dad was a much nicer guy than this guy, <laughs> so... <laughs> But you and did some yeah. research through your dad, through speaking okay. with your father? This is how you came up with the idea? Well, I, had, I had interviewed him, and then I also had – he wrote some notes from his uh, World War II experiences that I kind of read over and and used that as a little bit of a, of a launching point for me. Wow, that's wonderful that you spoke – actually spoke to your dad about it and that he would speak about it, and I bet your family really is happy about that. Well, it's funny before uh, before he passed away, and when he was in perfect health, I I interviewed him a couple times, and and you know filmed it with the mm-hmm. you know with the home the home camera sure. or whatever at the mm-hmm. time, and uh, so yeah, so I have uh, so we'll always have that, which is nice, you know. That's nice. I I tried to get my parents to do that, and they're like, oh, Matthew, we have nothing to say. But it, it's funny. There are things that you realize it's that. There are these interesting things in their lives that you never knew about or whatever, and you mm-hmm. think, wow. Right. You when know. you do hear a story, all of a sudden you're like, that happened? <laughs> yes. Why didn't you tell me about <laughs> yeah. this? You know. But that happens with our kids, too. Our kids oh. will be like, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. So where are you in the process of, with that book? Uh, well, I just finished it, and that's just uh, that's just uh, Amazon just put that out, so they could pick that up. You, you know, they could, you could pick up either of my books on Amazon.com. Oh, fantastic! Excellent. Well, Brian Kiley, thank you very much for joining us today on the Author Inside You podcast. It was great talking to you. Oh, it was great talking to you. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it was very interesting talking to Brian, and we appreciate him taking the time to speak with us today. It was great that he shared his story. And if you have a minute, would you mind sharing our podcast with a friend of yours? And until next time, right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.